What's up guys, Rumbling Man here today coming to you from Florida. I hope everybody's doing absolutely great out there. Uh, I'm stoked today because I'm getting to review an extremely cool bass by Ibanez. This is the Ibanez Talman 310 bass. The color on this is turquoise sparkle. I just think that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. Now this sticker doesn't come with the bass. That's my buddy Ed's sticker. Beautiful color with a matching headstock. And when I hold this bass, I mean, it's not a lightweight bass. It's uh, fairly heavy. Uh, but I feel like I'm holding a high-quality instrument. I love to pull it out and just slap on it. I love the neck on this bass. Um, the, the finish on this neck back here is very glossy. Um, and it's not a vintage tinted gloss. It's just a beautiful, natural uh, gloss. And I just absolutely love it. Uh, when I look at this bass, every detail on the bass seems so well done. This nut just seems like it's it's really fixed, really steady. A, a very cool piece of wood. Here's the back side. You got your 9 volt uh, right here, the 4 volt, and then uh, the back of the headstock right here. We have a string tree uh, between the D and A strings. Um, in person to hold this thing, it's stunning. It's even more beautiful than it looks online. The foremost pickup, which is technically the middle pickup position, is a P-style split coil pickup. The same kind of pickup that some of the famous uh, Fender Precision bases from the 1960s uh, use. Basically a P-style pickup, but it's Ibanez's take, obviously. With it being a split coil, can it sound like a P-bass? Does it have that edge? Does it have that growl? Does it have that thump to it? Well, let's find out real quick. Um, and In fact, let's see if it can have a little bit of a vintage sound. Um, if maybe uh, we can get kind of a tone that you would have heard on maybe some of the Stax records of the 60s, some of the Motown records, um, some of those classic P-Bass uh, thump style sounds. Obviously, I'm not using flat rounds right now. These are rounds, but for versatility, uh, it's probably best to have rounds for the demo anyway. So let's check it out. So specifically what these pickups are is um, this uh, foremost pickup, um, you can call it a neck pickup, it's really more of a middle pickup. Um, it is going to be Ibanez's own dynamic P-style pickup, uh, and it is a passive pickup. And then in the bridge position, uh, Ibanez's dynamic J2 pickup, which is also passive. So though you have uh, an active preamp in this bass, uh, the pickups themselves are passive pickups. We got chrome hardware. Uh, this is a poplar body, believe it or not. Uh, and the neck, this beautiful maple is a TMB4 maple neck. And I gotta tell you, I mean, I just love that gloss finish. Um, it rocks. It, you know, it's so funny, the more uh, bass players and guitar players I talk to, it seems to me like uh, the majority that I talk to like an unfinished or satin finished neck. Uh, and whereas I, those have their place for me and, and I have guitars like that and, and love them very much, I just, I love gloss, man. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I grew up playing glossy necks. I don't know. I just, I dig this thing, man. I, I gotta tell you, uh, one of my dream bases is actually a Talman. The standard line, I love the TMB 605 uh, five-string Talman model. It's very cool, but to me, the most amazing, I mean, really amazing to me, is the Prestige model, which is the TMB 2000, and those ones are made in Japan. But the thing is, if you can't afford the Prestige, um, these are absolutely fabulous, and I'm, I guarantee a lot of bass players even would probably play both and tell you they don't really know what the difference is, uh, because Ibanez is doing a great job with these. I mean, this is an Indonesian-made bass, uh, but if you put it in my hands and ask me, what country is this made in? I would never know it was Indonesia. I'd say Mexico or America. To me, it feels like a very well-constructed instrument. Uh, you can't beat those looks. I mean, green, that's probably my very favorite color for uh, a guitar bass. Lake Placid Blue being second. But yeah, I know you want to hear it some more, so let's definitely check out how it sounds a little bit more. Um, I'm going to plug it up and let's take a listen. So this very cool bridge pickup here, which um, is very neat, very cool how it can split uh, from a humbucker into a single coil. 
But with the humbuckered version, if you're on full-fledged humbucker, can you get kind of a Music Man sound? After all, uh, the Music Man Stingray basses are known for being dominantly uh, British humbucker basses, often with an active preamp. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to test it on one of the reggae lines I always use. We're going to see how this bass shines for slap tones. So you're hearing just the bridge humbucker. I'm going to boost the treble about halfway. For the demo today, I'm using a Diodario Planet Waves cable uh, run into a Zoom B3, which I, a great little bass unit that I'm using for uh, amp simulation and compression today. Uh, both these things you can check out on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description. Uh, but the EQs are going to be all flat. So the EQs you're hearing are coming from the bass itself. It's impressive just how much tonal variety you can get with this bass and what all you can potentially do with it. Um, if you have you know, both pickups on, just with a flat EQ, you get this round tone that has more beef than like any bass I've ever played. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's monstrous. And then I tried boosting the bass all the way and it just, I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. But here's a boosted song. And on the uh, editing right there, I probably had to take the volume down because that makes it so incredibly loud. For another thing, if you want like a Jocko kind of sound, I mean, all you gotta do is split this uh, bridge pickup here and just solo it. And uh, that's got it really has that classic um, jazz bass bridge pickup kind of sound to it. I think bass players love that particular tone. It's so much fun. And then of course, like we demoed a, a few minutes ago, I mean, you've got your P-style pickup. I was doing some recording the other day and used this bass on a track and I just used the straight up uh, P bass pickup. Um, one thing that, uh, that I'm not crazy about is this, there's a little bit of buzz when you split the humbucker into a single coil. Now that's going to happen uh, because unless it's you know in polarity with another single coil pickup, it's generally going to buzz no matter what, but it's a little more buzz than I care for. Um, like right now we're kind of in, um, in both the pickups and you can hear I don't know if you hear the difference, but I do. Like right now with a humbucker, I don't hear the buzz. But then if I flick it to single coil, and then if you solo just that single coil pickup, to me the buzz gets pretty severe. And you can humbucker and it goes away. Now with single coils, I mean, unless they're, you know, hum canceling single coil pickups or noiseless like what Fender makes, um, you know, you're always going to have some buzz. But for me, it's a little more than I care for. In fact, um, even in the PJ configuration like this, I mean, it sounds wonderful. It's a beautiful bass tone, um, but it's it, there is a little more buzz there than I personally care for. That said, it's probably nothing extreme, especially in a live setting. I really don't think you're going to notice it that much, but for recording, it's something you might notice and might want to take note of. Uh, but there's all kinds of options that you can do, things you can do, upgrades you can make to the bass, you know, to make it sound differently however you want. Guitars and basses are highly customizable, uh, so don't let a little bit of buzz on the back pickup throw you on this bass. It's a great one. You may say, well, Rumble Man, I mean, can it sound like a jazz bass? I mean, you can get kind of a music band kind of tone, uh, you can get kind of a precision bass tone, but can you get a jazz bass tone? The answer is if you're referring to um, straight up to jazz bass style single coil pickups, uh, then not necessarily, no. However, I think you could probably get pretty close because what you're gonna have is if you split this bridge pickup right here and you put this thing in the middle and thus uh, go through both the pickups, uh, what you're gonna have is essentially a PJ configuration. With a PJ configuration, it sounds similar to a jazz, but it has the kick of a P bass. I'm going to record a little bit of pick style playing one of my skater kind of riffs. And here's what we'll do. Because the split coil pickup 
uh, can have a little extra kick to it. What I'll do is on the active tube and EQ, I'm just gonna boost the treble, and I'm just gonna do it very slightly. And we'll do some pick playing and see if it comes close to a jazz bass style sound. Anyway, guys, if you want to pick one of these up, I certainly recommend doing so. It's fantastic. Um, I've got a link in the description to where you can pick up an Ibanez Talman bass uh, on Amazon. I also have links to uh, the other products I mentioned. A couple people I want to thank. Uh, first place I saw one of these was another YouTuber, Alan Brown, uh, on his channel. He, uh, he did a really good uh, review of one of these, a very nice demo of it. Uh, and I also want to thank my buddy Ed Hauser, who uh, started out as a subscriber, but uh, has become a friend, and uh, this bass is on loan from him today. It's uh, one of the basses from his collection, and a uh, great bass player in Tampa, does a great job with music and studio production. So uh, certainly thanks to him for uh, making this possible today. What, what a blessing to review a cool, a cool guitar or bass anytime. I enjoy it. Um, pros and cons. Uh, to me, the pros with this bass are going to be uh, looks. I mean, it's, it's stunning. Uh, pros are going to be feel. It's, it's just got a high quality feeling to it. Playing it is an addiction. I love to play this bass. So playability and sound. I mean, it's, it's got a really cool sound to it. But there are also some cons to me. I mean, one of the cons is that, um, is that little bit of buzz you hear uh, in the bridge when it's split or even when it's um, in the PJ uh, kind of configuration. I, I wish there was a little less uh, of a hum to that particular pickup. Tuning stability, I mean, it's got pretty good tuning stability, but it's not the best. I mean, I did during the, you know, when I made the demo uh, today, I, uh, I I did have to tune like four or five times. Um, so, I mean, obviously a setup can usually take care of that. Another con is that there's kind of a learning curve in playing it. Uh, I'm used to playing Fender style basses, so to me, this neck is different. It's not bad in any sense of the word, but if you're used to Fender style necks and you want a certain Fender profile, then I would suggest going with a Fender. But if you're looking for a new adventure, I highly recommend taking a spin on one of these or just going and order one if you can. These are wonderful bases. Um, yeah, I give you a thumbs up. I mean, yeah, I say go for it. Um, as always, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for visiting the Rumbling Man channel on the web and for tuning into my review of this base today. Uh, if you can, please go on and uh, give me a thumbs up button if you enjoyed this demo. And I would love to have you as one of my subscribers. Uh, I surpassed 3,000, thank the Lord. And uh, the next milestone for me is going to be 4,000. Uh, I'm trying to turn the work of Rumbling Man into something more than just a YouTube hobby, but I want to make it bigger. So I've got plans like going to the next NAMM show, um, things like that, and uh, trying to financially get it off the ground because I'm kind of operating on zero budget. So for that purpose, I do have a Patreon uh, and a PayPal. Now, I would never pressure anyone to donate money, especially if they can't afford to, but if you would be interested in being a monthly contributor to the Rumbling Man channel via Patreon or a one-time donor, uh, via PayPal, your donations would be very much appreciated. I'm on Facebook too. On Facebook, I repost a lot of these videos and I post pictures of gigs I'm playing and stuff. So I'd love to connect with you on Facebook. Uh, you can go on and like me, facebook.com slash man. And the links to everything I just mentioned, they're all in the video description. So make sure you check that out. Got plenty more things coming up. String reviews, bass reviews, guitar reviews, pedal reviews, uh, a lot of good things coming up. So stay tuned to the Rumbling Man channel. Uh, and thanks again for watching this video today. And until the next one, take care.